Hello, my name is Marion Butler. I'm the Learning Advisor at UQ. Today we're going to look at critical thinking. While this phrase means different things to different people in different disciplines, we're going to look at it at a fairly generic level. In doing this, I'll argue that critical thinking is about questioning as you read and commenting on the texts you have read when you write about them. It is not very difficult once you understand how to do it. So, how do we read critically? Critical readers question authors they read. They engage in conversations with author authors as they read by asking questions like, why is that? How can that be? What would happen if you'd done... Are you serious? I don't think so. They look for strengths and weaknesses in the arguments or research that they're reading. They also make links between authors who may not at first glance appear to be saying similar things, but when you look closely at them, you can see similarities in argument or focus or issues they raise. As you question, question and start to look for strengths and weaknesses, you start to develop opinions about what you've read. Finally, Try not to think about reading as a time to simply collect facts. Focus instead on your response to the facts. This will change the way that you write. Because instead of focusing on facts and summaries, you will be focusing on your response, often to an assignment question. This is the argument or set of ideas you have about your assignment topic. As you focus on your ideas, you'll find that you start to develop a voice as a writer. As you find your voice more often, you will grow in confidence as a writer who has something unique to say, rather than simply reporting facts. There are six steps that will help you to read and write critically. I will explain each one in detail. But firstly, you need to read for facts, but don't stop there. Read as well for themes or main ideas and arguments, then link what you have read to practice. As well, it's important to analyse the text or to understand how the author constructed it. Once you understand the component parts, you can begin to evaluate its strengths and weaknesses. Finally, based on all that you have read, you construct your response or questions. You don't necessarily need to read this particular text or the one on the, on the next slide. Just note the selective highlighting and the keyword summary margins. Suppose you were writing an essay in which you were asked to try to explain how the Holocaust during World War II could possibly have happened. You might develop some sub-questions to help you to unpack the bigger question, like these. What was the mainstream church response to the Nazi regime? How aware was the populace about what was happening? How much opposition was there in society in general? Try making a folder with the name of the essay on it in your computer. Then make the name of each of your documents one document in this computer, in this computer folder. As you read, record the, the different authors' ideas under the relevant questions. This will help you to sort the information as you take notes. Be sure to record the date, the author, the title of the article, and the page where you can trace the information to a particular page. So you have your folder. In your folder, you have these documents. The name of each document is the name of one of these questions. And then underneath each question, you put 
what the different authors have to say in answer to that question. Okay, so when you've read and identified facts in each article, try to decide on a main theme or idea for each article. So ask yourself questions like, what's it about at a broad level? Why was it written? What are the strongest overall ideas that are evident in it? What's the main argument? And even, what has not been discussed? Next, think about how the ideas can be used in practical situations or real-life settings. For example, how will they be useful for your assignment or project? What implications might there be if you were a professional trying to apply these ideas? What sorts of issues would you face? And are these ideas more likely to be successful in some settings and not others? This slide and the next one simply give examples of content themes and issues or applications in a student's writing. Okay, so step four is to try to analyze the research and or the argument that's been constructed. So ask yourself questions like, what are the key ideas in the argument? Analyze how the article fits together or how it has been structured. How does one idea lead to the next one? What's the logical progression? What's the nature of relationships between the ideas? Which ones go together? Which ones are most important? Which are less important? Try to trace the argument. So, identify what's the most basic idea. This is usually the idea that all the others rest on. What, f what ideas flow from this idea or this premise? And how are these ideas logically connected? Is the logic clear or unclear? What's the conclusion and how does it relate to the ideas that precede it? Next, evaluate the readings, step five. Start to seriously think about what are the strengths and the weaknesses of the reading and ask yourself questions. Okay, there are lots of questions that you can ask to help you to evaluate, but these next few slides will give you first some questions and then some examples of those questions. So, let's put these questions up and you can read them at your leisure. These are some examples and there are many more. These are questions that would be useful when you're reading research articles. So all the questions are based around how the research was done. So these next slides are just examples of a student's writing where they've critiqued some research and the critiqued part is in red and it's showing you an example of the title of the slide. So it's not so important that you can identify exactly what type of critique is happening. What is important is that you do critique in response to questioning the research that you've been reading.
Okay, so you can go back to those questions and look at them as you need to. But here's another list of questions. This list of questions is really to help you to evaluate more theoretical articles. So when people haven't actually gone and done some research, but they're writing about their thoughts or their theories or their ideas about how and why things work, then there's a different set of questions, although there is some similarity between the two. So here's the list. And again, you can look at these when you need them. Okay, so our next step is to look at look across the articles. Once we've evaluated, we need to look across all the articles and do some comparing and contrasting. So what are the similarities? Who's saying similar things? What are the differences? What do they agree and what do they disagree about? Sometimes it's very obvious and sometimes it's quite subtle. Have a look at the language, definitions and terminology. Are they talking about similar ideas using different language? If you can notice that and comment on that, then that shows that you really are understanding it. Consider how you can discuss the articles together rather as isolated bits. So if you can see that certain authors have similar views, then you talk about them together. And then there might be slight points of disagreement and you'd explain those slight points of disagreement as well. Identify the gaps. Identify what hasn't been talked about. This is often important, especially if you want to do research. Often a gap in the literature will be the issue that you will actually go and do some research on. So this is an example of a gap, a gap across two articles. When you're trying to keep track of a lot of articles that you've read, and you're trying to focus on critical thinking and look for similarities and differences between authors, it's often useful to use a critical reading grid like this one here. Record the article over here. You can put the author's name in here or the name of the article or you could just number them if you like. Then in here in this column for each article identify the key points or facts or information that you're actually going to use in your piece of writing. Then record here what are the main ideas or the main arguments. So this is big picture stuff, this is detail, small picture stuff. In the next column you write down the issues and applications or how these ideas might or might not work in practice. Next you put down what you think are the strengths of the writing or the research or the article and in the final column you put the weaknesses. Now this helps you to think broadly about the research and writing that you've been reading and it helps you to see what the similarities and differences are between different authors who are writing in that field. You can see that I filled in the table with a few ideas and this one is a tourism example but you would just put in whatever it is that you've been reading. You can print this sheet, this blank one, or you can make a modified version of it on your computer to keep track of your readings. You can also do this in Excel or just simply on a Word document. Right, so step six is to create your response based on the text that you have read. Often your ideas are summed up in the thesis statement in an essay. And this appears obviously in your introduction. And when you're writing the thesis statement, you need to keep in mind things like what's the relationship between the ideas? What's the most important issue? As you write, 
and start to create something new, make sure that you make strong links between the sections, the paragraphs, and the sentences in the essay. And this can be done by using words that signpost how you're understanding the relationship between the ideas. So words like therefore, as a result, consequently. Show your reader also how you understand the material fits together. And as you do this, this gives you a voice. So you explain what you think are the key ideas, the key strengths and the weaknesses. And as you talk about it at that level, you find that you have a voice, you have something to say. Make sure that you use tentative language. So language like, it's possible, it could be the case, it is likely. Don't use words like, I think, I believe, and personal pronouns. In most academic writing, that's not acceptable. Usually it's advisable to keep your language in the third person. So the author claims, or this research shows. Okay, this is an example of a student's writing and using the essay topic at the, at the top of the slide, this is a student's response. The writing that is in blue shows the student's thinking. So the first blue part is the background or the context to the topic. This is an introductory paragraph. The second blue part over here is the thesis or what the student thinks or what they're going to argue in the essay. And the third blue part here is the student making a point to explain what this paragraph is going to be about. And the point links back to the ideas that are explained in the thesis. So each point at the beginning of a paragraph should help to explain the thesis in more detail. Then the black writing is the evidence which supports this idea so that as you write paragraph by paragraph you're developing an argument that's supported with evidence or authors that you've read. This slide shows the students thinking in blue in the left column again and the point here is to show how much of your writing should be critical thinking. When you read this you'll see that at least half of this paragraph on the left hand side here is the student's comment or the student's thinking. Whereas this one on the right there's almost nothing of the student. There's no blue writing. This is just factual regurgitation of facts. This one shows the student's thinking and understanding. So to conclude, start by reading for facts, information or content that you're going to use in your assignment. Then look for themes or main ideas, arguments, overarching concepts. This is big stuff, not detail. Third, Make the link between theory and practice. Think about how this, these ideas would be useful to you as a practitioner. Then, analyze the structure of the text. Think about how the text is structured or put together or how the ideas fit into a cohesive or not so cohesive argument. Evaluate the text. Look at its pluses and minuses, its strengths and weaknesses. And finally, Create your response, which is your thoughts and arguments about the topic after, of course, you've done all of your reading.